Hi, it's Tuesday, September 24th. We now have Tropical Storm Helene in the Western Caribbean, named by the National Hurricane Center, a tropical storm with max winds of about 45 miles per hour. It continues to move generally towards the west-northwest, towards the northeastern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula. It's expected to turn northward into the Gulf of Mexico and eventually impact Florida later in the week. Here's the close-up visible loop of Helene this morning. We talked yesterday about how the system was vertically decoupled. The low-level circulation center was west of the mid-level center by quite a distance. This morning, we can still see the low-level center. It's right there, although it looks like this may be just one of potentially several vorticity maxima or little mesovortices within the broader pocket of circulation. And the reason I say that is you see this kind of moving toward the southwest. It's a bit of an odd motion. No, the storm is not actually going this direction long term. But what this implies is that this may not be the full focus of the circulation within this broader pocket here and underneath the convection we may be seeing other little vorticity maxima being generated and they may be all rotating kind of around a common center in this area overall so it, with time i would expect either this to turn back toward the west northwest or we get an elongation out towards the northeast side and we have another meso rotate around and the two will likely become better organized closer to the Yucatan channel within the next 24 hours. And for the moment, Helene is not going for the most aggressive organization trends that some of the models yesterday favored. I showed you the HAFS model yesterday, which had this as a pretty stark hurricane by the time it gets to this spot in the Yucatan Channel. It looks like it won't quite be that quick to develop. There is still a touch of shear making this asymmetric. You'll see milky white cirrus out of the south that are continuing to push toward the center at the moment. That's leading to this uh, structure with most of the convection and strong winds in a band on the northeast side. This is the aircraft data showing that. There's the center that was identified on the last pass and that you saw in the visible animation with most of the strong wind to the northeast and comparatively light wind on the other side of the circulation. All of this means that Helene still has some work to do to actually become a hurricane. It still has about 24 hours before it gets to a spot near the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula or the Yucatan Channel, and we'll see how it looks tomorrow. But there has been great variability in the modeling on how quickly Helene will get going in the initial day or so here. This is the water vapor satellite loop showing you that the, the cause of the light shear that is persisting today is this upper level trough over the Yucatan Peninsula, which is getting pushed off toward the northwest and weakening. So the shear is beginning to abate as expected and uh, conditions are expected to become more favorable uh, tomorrow and the day after. One thing we can hope for is there is a little bit of a wedge of darker gray here. So this is very dry air over the Yucatan right here. And it's possible that as Helene moves into the Yucatan channel that this dry air gets sucked into the circulation and entrains and disrupts the initial formation of the inner convective core of Helene as it enters the Gulf. Right now, most modeling suggests that once it gets into the Gulf, it's all systems go for intensification, but we will be watching to see just how strong it is at that launching point across the Gulf. The weaker it is, the better, of course, for Florida later on. For Mexico and Cuba, this will obviously also matter. There is a hurricane watch out for both coastlines here, tropical storm warning. Right now, trends are looking okay. This is not going to be terribly strong in 24 hours by the looks of its organization today, but it could be approaching hurricane intensity nonetheless. This is the GFS upper level wind plot at 200 millibars. Initialized as of this recording, there's where Helene is right now. You can see that little trough that we showed you in water vapor satellite imagery. So just a touch of shear, but this will be decreasing as the system moves toward the Yucatan Channel. And you can see that trough kind of just evaporate away here and the, the wind aloft becomes more out of the southeast instead of the south-southwest. And shear reduces quite a bit. And in conjunction with that, we have this jet streak developing over the southeastern U.S. So you get a huge ventilation area with strong upper-level divergence over the eastern Gulf of Mexico and a powerful poleward outflow channel. This means that conditions will likely be optimal for Helene as it enters the Gulf and during the first half of its journey northward across the Gulf. By the time it gets up toward Florida, we start to see an increase in shear and southwesterly wind aloft hitting it from the backside. So by the time of landfall, conditions will likely be coming less favorable. 
but it's going to be moving very quickly. You can see that in just 12 hours, it makes it from the central Gulf all the way to the coastline. So it's moving northeastward at quite a clip on most of these model forecasts, and there won't be enough time for appreciable weakening to occur in all likelihood. So it's possible that intensification will cease at some point prior to landfall, but it's also possible it intensifies all the way through. Uh, conditions just won't be unfavorable for long enough uh, to really reverse the trend, and this is likely to be a significant hurricane by the time it makes it to Florida. Now, one of the big determining factors will be its short-term organization trend, and as I mentioned earlier, models have deferred you know, quite a bit on this over the last day or so. This is the GFS showing mid-level moisture and wind, 400 to 700 millibar average, and the surface low is shown here in the black contours in the red L with the, the pressure value there. And you can see that over the next 12 hours, you can see it actually has that northern mesovortex forming, so you have kind of a double-barreled structure. A little bit of this dry air does get pulled in, and as a result, it has a, a little bit of a dry slot here on Wednesday afternoon, and the system is actually centered close to the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula. It's a little bit farther west than yesterday, and you can see that the inner convective core has not yet fully formed. We don't have a symmetric ball of green here. It's more like a tongue of green intertwined with a tongue of dry. So just a little bit of disruption there means this is a little bit weaker than previous runs. So if you look at yesterday, you can see how strong this was on some of those model runs already well on its way to a significant hurricane as it enters the Gulf, but recent runs a little bit weaker than that. We're also seeing tremendous variability in the high resolution models. So this is the NOAA HAFS A model as an example. This is the wind field right now. And as it gets into the Yucatan Channel, you see it is starting to form an inner core wind field. By that we mean this tight donut of maximum wind. And this is Wednesday morning, late morning, it's really changed its tune from run to run. We've had anything from a near major hurricane in the Yucatan Channel to something that's very weak to solutions in the middle over the last 24 hours from this model. So you can see the variability here, and that will matter because the starting point, how strong it is right here, will play a big role in its peak intensity over the Gulf. Now on this particular model, you know, even if Helene ends up not quite at hurricane strength as it enters the Gulf, you'll see on this model the potential that the high ocean heat content gives this storm as it moves through a favorable upper level environment. This becomes a very powerful major hurricane on some of these models in short order over the Gulf of Mexico. It does not take much time, and you can see how powerful this is potentially nearing Florida. That doesn't mean that it will actually peak out this strong, but you can see how quickly that happens. There will be uh, very optimal conditions at around this time, and during its initial 12 to 24 hours moving into the Gulf, we could see a period of rapid intensification, assuming that the inner core has actually formed by that time. Talking about the track now for a minute, this is the GFS mid-level steering flow plot valid very early Thursday morning. This is where Helene would be just now embarking across the Gulf of Mexico, leaving the Yucatan Peninsula area. And we talked yesterday about how the main steering feature here is this kind of bowling ball cutoff low over the Mississippi Valley and this ridge off of the Carolinas right here. And the lane of flow between them is what's going to guide the storm north northeastward into Florida. Now, over the last 24 hours, we've seen kind of two different changes in the modeling. One is that the storm ends up closer to the Yucatan than it does to Cuba. So the launching point is farther west over the Gulf. However, We've also seen a trend eastward in this upper level low here. So if I show you the last few runs of the GFS, you'll note that just a little bit of a shift eastward in this position has occurred. If I go forward again now, you'll see that shift closer to the Mississippi River Valley. You'll also see this ridge round off a little bit more. So this black 588 contour is a little farther east than it was yesterday where it was further inland as the ridge was stronger. So what this means is although the launching point has shifted a little bit further west, the race track toward Florida has also shifted a little bit further east as this as these steering features have shifted toward the right. And so it ends up being kind of a wash. The GFS landfall location in the Big Bend has been pretty consistent on most of these runs over the last couple of days right into that area of the coastline in here. And honestly, most models are kind of narrowing in on that nature coast zone of Florida. The European model is similar here, 
showing this upper level low that has also shifted a little bit further east on this model and the storm ends up a little bit west of the GFS, but in general, still in the Big Bend area, more into Appalachie Bay on this particular model, but again, in this particular portion of Florida. Now, in terms of what we can narrow down here, we're one day closer to the landfall, which will be, you know, Wednesday night, Thursday. If this upper level low is positioned further east like this, you know, it's very difficult to actually get the storm to come due north into the very western panhandle of Florida. So we're starting to cut off in terms of the potential landfall, we're starting to delete some of these areas along the coastline, at least given the current model projections for these steering features. We can always see shifts back the other way, but as of right now, most modeling is from the central Florida panhandle down to the central uh, Florida peninsula. And you can kind of see that on the GFS ensemble, which shows 31 different possible versions of the future for Helene. And you can kind of see that zone of uncertainty here from the northern to central Florida peninsula into the central Florida panhandle with the focus or the average being around the Big Bend or Appalachie Bay. And you can see that the colors are all red or pink here, indicating a strong storm, uh, significant hurricane by the time it gets across the Gulf as well. As we mentioned, most modeling agrees on a favorable environment that should allow significant intensification during this portion of the storm's journey. So we are expecting a high impact event here coming into the Gulf Coast. This is the official National Hurricane Center forecast for Helene, which you can see kind of aligns with what we just talked about, showing that track near the northeastern tip of the Yucatan and then accelerating north-northeastward toward the Big Bend area of Florida. You can see the cone of uncertainty kind of encompasses that whole region that we talked about with the modeling concentrated in that part of the coastline, but there is a hurricane warning that extends well outside of this cone as just a slight shift eastward in the track could bring the wind field up against the west western Florida peninsula. So be aware of possible adjustments to this forecast over the next couple of days. And the fact that hazards will extend well outside the cone, especially storm surge, which will extend all the way up and down the coastline, regardless of exactly where the eye tracks out over the Gulf. You can see warnings up for northeastern Mexico and western Cuba, including a hurricane watch. Helene is expected to become a hurricane in 24 hours on Wednesday morning. This will be important as we talked about. We'll see if it's actually getting itself together and has an inner core by that time. Uh, this will determine a lot about its peak intensity later. Right now, the National Hurricane Center uh, says that it will become a major hurricane with max winds of about 115 miles per hour, making it a category three or major hurricane. Again, of course, there's some wiggle room on that depending on how organized it is at its launching point. Uh, but regardless, this is expected to be a significant hurricane with max winds likely 100 plus. And regardless of the exact value, significant hazards are likely as conditions will favor intensification as it approaches Florida. Storm surge, big concern for coastal areas. This is a surge prone area of the Gulf of Mexico, 10 to 15 feet possible in the Big Bend area. So significant danger for those living near the coast in flood or evacuation zones. Please heed those warnings if you are getting them five to 10 feet possible from Apalachicola to Alligator Point, and several feet of inundation possible all the way down the Western Florida coastline, all the way down to the Keys where several feet of water rise are still possible as the storm continues to push southerly and southwesterly wind and pushing water toward the coastline even as the track is likely to the west of the coast there. This is the corridor of risk for tropical storm force winds, 40 miles per hour or stronger. The brown color is about the 50-50 line, so 50-50 chances of tropical storm force wind extending over a wide area of the Florida coastline from the central panhandle down the western peninsula coastline. You can see the time of arrival here. It has moved uh, a little bit later as the storm has slowed down just a touch. So Wednesday morning in the Keys, Wednesday evening starts to move up the peninsula, and then by Thursday morning, that's about the earliest when tropical storm force winds could be expected. The actual landfall of the eye now projected to be Thursday evening, Eastern time. There will also be inland flooding risk. Fortunately, the storm will be moving pretty quickly to the north-northeast, so it will probably limit the total amount of storm rain. However, there will be the potential for enough to fall that there are flash flooding concerns, as is true with every tropical system that moves into this area. And keep in mind as well that there could be inland wind risk here 
as the storm will be moving quite quickly. And if it is a major hurricane, that hurricane force wind field could persist inland by a fair amount, causing potential for downed trees, power lines, and power outages well inland from the landfall point. So keep an eye out for warnings and advisories from the National Weather Service as the storm gets closer to the Florida coastline. That's about it for this video. Everyone, please stay safe and be prepared for Helene as it gets ready to cross into the Gulf, likely to be a significant hurricane on arrival in Florida on Thursday. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.